I uh, got a um, job in BNHS because I first joined as a volunteer for a BNHS snake show. BNHS in some time back in 19, um, uh, uh, 19, um, uh, 77, 77, 78, maybe some of you are not were born that time. So, so 77, uh, 78 of uh, that time, uh, they had arranged a snake show and they wanted volunteers actually. And that's the time I was working with Tata's and uh, I got uh, appointed to work as a volunteer. And I had, I, I had a choice whether I had to continue work with Tata's or join BNHS. So I gave up my jobs in Tata's and I joined being as a volunteer. My mother got very angry. She said, you were leaving a jo good job from Tata. I said, yes, but my father said, let him be happy. He should be happy first. And that is what, um, and I followed my heart and I joined, left Tata's and joined BNHS. But of course, first I was a volunteer in the snake show and we had held a snake show in Cross Maidan. I don't know whether some of you were there that time. You could have uh, seen that uh, snake show, the huge snake show. And we had got snakes from all over India, King Cobra, and even rattlesnakes we got from USA. So that was my fascination for reptiles and amphibians. I started with. But then later on, as the time passed, I, I, drift, I drifted towards more towards butterflies. I don't know how it happened. But yes, but snakes today also fascinate. Whenever today I'm here also now, I've left Mumbai. I'm staying at Karjat. Here, uh, I find a lot of snakes. I find a... Uh, 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 a bronze back tree snake or cat snake. That day we had even Russell Swiper on the road walking, uh, crawling slowly like a train it was moving. Uh, and uh, it's interesting. So let me stay uh, straight away. We'll go to the our presentation and uh, let me uh, share my presentation with you. Just, uh, just check whether you can see it, then we can start. Yes, sir. Yes, it's visible. It's visible. Okay, great. So today we'll talk about you know herpetofauna. Herpetofauna. I'll explain what is herpetofauna, and then basically we are talking about a place called Ambivli. Ambivli is actually a railway station next to as you go from Kalyan to Shahad by traveling by train. That's Ambivli, and uh, I Nature Watch has been has given a project actually here and uh, sponsored by the DCB Bank and the. Uh, uh, Kalyan Dombuli Municipal Corporation was very kind enough to afford, to offer this place uh, to start a biodiversity park. And uh, I will take you there also and we will have a look at this. So let's begin with our uh, presentation. And later on, at the end of the presentation, you can ask me questions also. So basically, we are talking about herpetofauna. You know, herpetofauna is and uh, are all those frogs, toads, salamanders, newts, Sicilians, you know. Everything, right? You know, and they have reptiles like you know snakes, lizards, turtles, terrapins, tortoises, uh, crocodiles, and tauturas. Tauturas we don't get; they are found only only in New Zealand. But uh, yes, uh, we have a lot of variety of snakes, and we have got a lot of varieties of frogs, you know, lizards, uh, amphibians. You know, you, you name it, and we have it. So, uh, and these are all my photographs I have taken. You know the. Python had taken in Corbett National Park and in the frog actually uh, near my house only in Karjat and even the Gorpad. Gorpad also I found here in Karjat. So basically, um, I have been um, liking this, um, uh, you know, this group of animals or reptiles. Of course, uh, the, a lot of people ask me, I'll let, teach me how to catch snakes. Said, don't teach me. You know, first thing, you could don't try to catch a snake, but that's the best way of you know, getting bitten. And before learning how to catch snakes, you should before learn how to identify the snakes first. That is the key to it. So once you know what which snake is venomous, which is non-venomous, then only you can proceed. Otherwise, you can make a fatal mistake. Yes, fatal mistake. So basically, herpetology is a study of these animals, you know, the frogs, toads, snakes together. So it's not just herbs with snakes, but uh, everything together with the turtle, tortoises. So that's the study. And that study is called herpetology. It's a branch of zoology. You can do your PhD also now in this uh, course. You know, the Bombay University, the BNHS has got uh, seats reserved for uh, further studies like MSc and PhD and there are other wildlife institutes also in uh, Dehradun and then Sakon in uh, South where you can do your PhDs on MSc uh, uh, MSc or PhD on these uh, animals if you're interested. So basically if course, reptiles are you know those the scaly they have got scale scaly body that, that they are basically more watertight skins and um, the uh, like like lizards are there, fro uh, the snakes are there, 
and amphibians are frogs the frogs have got you know a toads frogs toads their their skin is little you know uh, they need to be near water need to be keep, remain moist actually they can't go in extreme dry condition because they can dry it out because the skin is not watertight basically and they have a different way of uh, their breeding cycle also am but this uh, uh, frogs actually lay eggs in the water in the foam nest and then the tadpoles grow as and they live as a fish the first life is like a fish and then they uh, start hopping around after they uh, grow as a, as an adult in reptiles of course there are um, uh, they lay eggs and their eggs are uh, not not like a ch chicken egg chicken is very hard shell is like uh, leathery sir, shell sir the slides are not moving is it a no, no, I'm not, you... uh, uh, what is your you have got which slide you have got now uh, her cut of another first slide title slide okay it is not moved no no okay let me see now uh, it is not in full screen also it is in the slide it's not in slide view acha surprising because here is on my full screen hold on let me make it a full screen again now not yet let me uh, uh, let me know if the other uh, can you no sir not yet okay wait wait i will i will go back to Please hold on. I'll just go back to my. Windows is not showing. Let me see. Hold on. hold on let me uh, you saw the first uh, screen that's it after that it didn't move okay yes. yes sir okay okay because this window is not coming through let me see can you see yes the screen is visible okay you can see the presentation not yeah. not full screen mode yeah not full screen. okay now not yet sir okay let me know maybe the uh, network is issue problem is there because i am far off in karjat in the hills away from mumbai So that may be the reason. Yesterday it went out very well, but till now, okay. So still now, nothing. Uh, no sir. Hold on. Huh?
Sometimes we are at the mercy of this. Uh, Yes, Can you see? Is visible, visible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Shalo. So we go back to the next uh, slide. Then uh, is it is it okay? Can you see this next slide? Yes, sir. Difference between that okay, slide perfect, is... perfect. Thank you. Shalo. Acha ho gaya. I was worried. <laughs> so basically, you know, uh, the difference between you know, I'm just showing you the difference between reptile and amphibians. And uh, one thing, you know, uh, some of the like snakes don't have eyelids. Uh, even uh, even some of the geckos uh, geckos uh, do have eyelids. Some of them, some of them don't have. It depends on the different species. Uh, but uh, lizards like uh, calatis will have always, and uh, you have frogs also. And then uh, frogs usually, as I said, that they they have, don't have watertight skins, and reptiles have watertight skins. So that's the main difference. So frogs cannot break the water connection. They have to remain around the water only. They breed near water. The young ones go grow in the water. Whereas reptiles have moved away from the water. They can, and their, their eggs are leathery, not totally calcium shell, but leathery. To, to, though they, so they can, they lay, uh, they can lay, uh, lay eggs away from water. Whereas frogs don't have that, that cover, the calcium or the leathery cover. So they have to always lay uh, these eggs in the watery environment only. So that's the difference. Uh, they have much, and of course, um, snakes, as you know, that you must have seen the snake flicking the tongue, actually. Why, you know, why it does, basically, it's a smelling. This is, tongue is a smelling organ. This is a, a bronze back tree snake, a harmless, non-venomous snake, and that's the flicking of the tongue. So always when you see the snake flicking his, his forked tongue, it basically is trying to collect the smell particles. It is, it is done automatically. And that's how it gets a smell and knows about what is what is around. And then you know we call poisonous and venomous. Now, venom is basically the snakes have venom. Venom is which is the snakes actually have got two big fangs, and they are like a doctor's hypodermic needle. You can see the slide. Hello. Can you see the slide of the yes, sir. Yes, venomous? Yes, we can see. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So venomous uh, snakes, you know, venom means the venom is a chem chemical in the present with them is basically is injected and it has to go inside inside the body or the blood, it contact with the blood. You can actually drink venom, nothing happens. And a lot of people say, you know, snake venom is used as drugs and it gets, no, no, you can't get intoxicated by snake venom. This, uh, recently, somebody or some celebrity was caught with snake venom, and they say they're Elvis, using. Yeah, that was YouTube, yeah. So they said, "Are he's caught? He's selling snake venom as drug." You know, snake venom is a protein. You can drink it. So far, you don't have any uh, uh, injury in your uh, mouth or your uh, in your stomach. It should not come in contact with blood. You can you can digest as a protein, and you are not going to get high at all. It is not like that. It's not drug which is the like a cocaine or something. So. Uh, people have got big concern, you know, snake venom is ultimate drug. No, not at all. You can drink as much quantity as you want, but you don't get actually that quantity. A snake venom is very expensive. And basically some spy spiders also have got this venom. Then wasp bees have got venom because they inject. And they inject inside your body and then you start getting the reaction. And whereas poison actually sometimes basically uh, some, like you see, the toad, the toad is very slow moving. We don't have the poison frogs like the uh, we have in Amazon forest of the South America. But we have other like we have uh, frogs which have got a special gland on the back called the parotid gland, and that that has got a toxin. And especially if a dog or a cat tries to molest or try to bite the frog or a toad, it will come in contact with the poison, and the dog will start frothing from his mouth. It starts nausea. It will get suffocated. It will not die, but never again it touched a toad. That's why your toads, you know, they move very slowly. You are a stupid toad, and you can't fly, move from we mar like house. But no, it is all, it, it moves very slowly. It is designed that way, and it has got a very powerful uh, two glands on the back, the swelling, and that can actually cause problems for the dogs and cats, any any other molester. Of course, some snakes can still eat those toads also, like cobra and rat snakes sometimes eat that also. But otherwise, it is protected. That is poison, and that's that has to be 
gone into the digestive system or sometimes it comes it it rubs against your skin that also you can but but venom is actually to be injected like the doctor's uh, injection and you know basically uh, these animals though they people have been killing reptiles and don't care for frogs but these are environmentally very important animals you know in some some years ago we were exporting frog legs to america to japan and to other places we were exporting tons of frog legs you know the companies like britain and other other some of the uh, foreign companies were involved in the frog frog legs and we then suddenly what happened was the some of the rice crop growing areas karjat and other areas they started suffering from major pest problem their uh, rice was getting uh, you know uh, destroyed by pest and they found okay, what happened in they have been spraying pesticide also but still it didn't work and they found the frog is missing from the rice fields ye frog kahan gaya where it gone they found the frog has gone to america frog has gone to our japan because there is big companies and they were employing people to catch frogs and they used to cut them uh, half and the legs were taken and they were canned and sent to all these country that's the time when uh, bnh is bombay natural society actually approached the indian council for research and they told ki sir there is a problem in the rice growing areas where frogs are missing and that is possibly causing the problem of these plantations and farmland and the rice field rice crop is failing give us some project where we'll prove you that the frogs are very important finally they gave a project to bnhs for 3 years bnhs worked in the field and they proved that the bullfrog the big bullfrog actually which they were exporting to us and japan the legs was eating four times his body weight the harmful insects in the rice fields and other plantations they were eating crabs also crabs are also very destructive in the plantations so the, and today now the frog is protected now the and the total the ban and, and the ban came the the export was banned totally of course now bangladesh and other places are exporting but india we are not uh, now the frog is totally uh, protected and is back in the rice fields doing its job as to con control the uh, pest species so these are important services we receive from these animals and they are basically also some of the uh, uh, chemicals found the frog's body are now they even found that they can actually tackle virus and other uh, diseases so these are medically also important and they also form a sort of a, a food chain uh, for other other animals birds insects and yes tribes still eat frog but that tribal eating frog is different but when we eat tons tons when we actually catch frogs by tons and export then it is harmful a tribal catching a frog and eating is not harmful because it is part of the ecology and is sustainable so basically uh, uh, that's how the amphibians can be important to us and of course snakes snakes as you know that they control the rat population and that is very important and especially rat snake even cobra also see they are actually uh, if you uh, ask a farmer then they can identify the snakes and they don't kill uh, the hamman or the rat snake in their field because they know it is actually a friend of the farmers and and also it is part of the of the ecological cycle because you know snakes are eaten by other birds like birds of prey the mongoose and other places and then again the snakes are eating frogs and frogs are eating insects and this kind of cycle goes on so this is part of the and in more important is the snake venom now snake venom they found out especially you know there are two types of snake venom one is the russell's viper and sawskull viper they got the venom that affects the blood circulation system so when and the cobra and crate actually affects the the brains and the nervous system so there are two different types you know the hemolytic and there is a uh, the other one is a, i forgot the name now so those are two different type of uh, uh, venoms one is affecting the nervous system and another uh, other one is uh, uh, blood system and both are now used for medicine for blood related diseases and also neurological diseases the the snakes uh, the uh, cobra venom and um, crate venom is used now and the institutes like afkin institute in mumbai they actually milk the snake they make the snake to bite on the glass like here you see on this la top uh, bottom left you can see the snake. they make the bite them on the glass and they they make them you know inject the venom and this venom is more expensive than gold actually and now they are in in especially in south india where the urula tribal is there where the uh, madras crocodile bank is there madras uh, snake park is there 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 are tribals urula tribals and they are now catching snakes this poisonous snakes venomous snakes and they milk the snake and then they mark the snake that you know when it was it was uh, milked and it was again that they release the snake and they keep on they don't kill the snake they catch they milk the snake and they release the snake 
and this way they are now able to harvest venom from this cobras and crates and other uh, russell viper other venomous snakes and they are able to generate income out of the snake venom at the same time they are not harming the snakes they catching and release them after the uh, uh, removing the venom and venom is like a saliva like we have saliva in mouth it keeps on regenerating it doesn't get finished that's how it is important as a, a role of snakes and of course uh, ca you know uh, controlling insect population basically in the farmland other thing where we have to have spray harmful pesticides frogs toads lizards they control the pest species the insects so that is very important role we have you know you know that pesticides are harmful to us today not a single species of insect has gone extinct and where are the insect all the insect is uh, deadly poisonous insecticides are gone they are gone in our bodies because we are eating everything but these kind of services provided by lizards and by uh, uh, other animals by controlling insect the birds also by controlling insect population they so we use less pesticide if you have these in your farms now we come to our ambivali biodiversity park here is a, you can just have a look at the place it's again uh, one area which is full of plantation uh, trees trees are grown as you enter the uh, place and then we have our biodiversity park where we have uh, a special you know uh, about 10000 saplings herbs shrubs we have planted and plus uh, we have this ga special garden like a bird garden then butterfly garden medicinal uh, plant garden astral garden bat garden also we have to attract bats so we have these sections and we have planted special trees to attract these uh, specific species like the bats we have to uh, attract some fruiting trees and the plants which fl flowers in the evening and for butterflies we have different nectar plants and the host plants in the moth gardens we have got different uh, host plant and nectar plants similarly birds also we have fruiting trees and some plants we attract insects so it it attracts all the insect eating birds as well as the fruit eating birds so uh, when you get chance do visit this place uh, near uh, ambivali it's a railway station there ambivali uh, beyond shard kalyan shard and ambivali and you can go there and we are also conduct conducting outings there and uh, camps uh, outings and so whenever we announce our outing please do join we put it on the facebook and we also uh, on the uh, you can write to us and on our website also you can check so basically the diversity is amazing at place you know you have so many species of plants more than more than 120 species of plants are there insects nearly 150 varieties of insects birds also you will be surprised there so many birds are there right from owls eagles and some of the now the migratory birds also come there like small uh, uh, raptors they come there and uh, like 80 more than 84 species of birds are there and herpetofauna herpetofauna means snakes reptiles what we are talking today is so more as 24 species of frogs snakes and reptiles other so let today we will talk about 10 top of them of the ambivali okay so let's start with the blind snake you know this snake is a small snake you will almost mistake it for a earthworm you must have seen it also many times you know when i was a child actually i was possibly in a fifth standard and um, uh, i saw this snake you know moving on the veranda of our neighbor and i i used to catch earthworms when i was a kid and i used to put them in the bottles and store and put them and uh, look, look after them and keep them as a pets earthworms in bottles and i saw this snake this uh, blind snake it looks like earthworm i thought it was earthworm and i went to catch it but the neighbor the lady saw she said she came rushing and she stopped me she said no this is not earthworm this is a snake and it was moving very fast you know on the it it could move it was just moving at the one place only because it was on the smooth veranda and i wanted to catch this snake because i thought it's a earthworm what's what wrong with it so <laughs> that, that was my first experience with snake in when i was in uh, uh, fifth standard that time and it was indeed not a earthworm but this blind snake it is called blind snake because it has got eyes very tiny eyes and uh, you'll be surprised that this snake is is uh, basically all female there is no males here hermaphrodite almost like they are both males and female but they are uh, basically uh, they uh, the the birth of young ones are given with the reproduction without mating so that's amazing because you know many times the male and female are unable to may, uh, meet so this adaptation is that even the male doesn't meet a female the female can still give the birth so that's an amazing um, a phenomena you see some of the animals uh, to reproduce without the need of male so basically in biology female is more important because she is the one who is going to reproduce the species not the male so even if male is found or not found female can still produce so that's an amazing um, uh, phenomena you see in this snake specially 
and um, uh, they uh, some actually uh, they reproduce without mating actually this is something which is very very there are some other uh, even moths also some of the moths also uh, uh, can produce without mating the all females there and they can reproduce uh, without mating let's look at this and you know basically this is found uh, in the in the garden also you sometimes under the pot if you lift a pot you'll find it or in the rotten wood and they eat ants eggs actually ants eggs and uh, it's a very tiny snake and very shiny and there are different varieties of uh, this uh, worm snake this is one the common the brahmini blind the common bl blind snake and you can see look at the eye here you can see this eye but this eye is very uh, not as functional as a as a normal eye but does it does uh, so it is almost blind is more of a sensory it can get feel and it hardly comes out you know it doesn't need to uh, move in the sunlight so many of the creatures who live in darkness actually lose the eyes there are very blind the blind cave fish is there or some of the other animals are there they turn blind because there is no need to see so this snake also has been living underground uh, below logs rotting logs below stones below so they don't need to see actually they can just feel and move or they can smell properly so on that they, they feed and they locate the prey also. And then we come to this snake called Naneti. The Marathi name is Naneti. Naneti or the buff striped uh, keelback. It's very uh, uh, harmless, non-venomous snake. And especially if you happen to go to uh, uh, Ambuli or other places, you know, for trekking just uh, the first rains, you will see them. And people lo locally people believe that if you kill one of the Naneti, seven will appear from nowhere. How this is possible? But yes, it happens. Why? Because during the breeding time, one female is chased by 700 males. So many times people uh, see one and they try to kill one, they see suddenly 700 run away. So that they think that we tried to kill one and 700 appeared. So that's why they believe that one will kill seven or eight in that way. So that's not a magic actually, but it's a fact that the one female is chased by males during the, mate, during the breeding time, especially in monsoon. And this is very commonly seen in the rice fields, in the open ga gardens, they come in the gardens also. And they eat fishes also, and they eat frogs also. And the pattern is such, you know, that you may not able to um, locate it. Sitting on the grass, it it totally becomes invisible, and it lays white eggs, you know. And the female usually uh, stays there with the eggs while, before they hatch. Many times, like python female also stays, and she also doesn't incubate because they don't have that kind of body heat, but they stay to guard there. Look at this uh, nanity and the striped keelback eggs and the young ones hatched there, freshly uh, young ones hatched from the eggs. And that's how the close-up look. You know, first thing is to actually learn to identify snakes, so venomous and non-venomous. That's that's a difficult part, but you have to learn slowly. But never, never try to catch snakes if you're not sure of it. Today, I know the snakes I can identify, but still, I do not catch venomous snakes. Because catching a venomous snake or so trying to catch a venomous snake is the best way of getting bitten. And it's not uh, uh, worth catching a snakes if you don't know about them. Please don't. Uh, some people try to do a stunt and that can cause their life also. Unless you know which is venomous or which is not venomous. So first thing is to know what which are venomous. Of course, the major venomous snakes we have in India are Cobra, Crate, Russell's Viper and Sawskill Viper. So these are the four. Of course, sea snakes are also venomous. Sea snakes venom is eight times fatal than Cobra, but they rarely actually come out and bite or anybody and their fangs are rear fangs. Even the local fishermen, when these sea snakes get into the, in the net, they just hold it by hand and remove it and throw it back to the sea. Because they are so sl sluggish, they are not very active like other snakes. And even they bite, the, the sting, the, the venom is from the rear fangs and you don't get, come in contact with the rear fangs. But otherwise, we don't have the anti-venine for uh, sea snakes in Mumbai, especially. You have to go to Australia possibly. But there are no snake bites, sea snake bites records in around uh, Maharashtra shores or other shores of India. But yes, um, we have uh, the polyvalent antivenine, which is one medicine uh, which is effective to all the bites of all four snakes. That is Russell's viper, Swaskar viper, crate and um, cobra. Then we come to Harantol. In Marathi, we call Harantol. Harantol is, uh, is called an... Uh, a green wine snake. People like, get scared actually, and it looks very dangerous. And they say, Ki, you know, it is believed that it sits on the tree and it attacks the human on the head. That's a belief actually. It's basically a harmless snake. It is a slightly venomous, but it is that venom is not harmful to humans. It can catch small birds, frogs, lizards, 
but it doesn't attack human being as such. It will it will possibly even corner, it will possibly open his mouth and try to scare you. But otherwise, it's totally harmless snake. And really, if you go to Mathiran, Mableshwar, other places, even in Ambuli, you can find them, these snakes. And it is so camouflaged that sometimes you'll you think that it is from some climber or a shrub is there or a tree, a wine is there. But it, that's why it's called wine snake. It looks like wine. And it has got it doesn't lay eggs, it gives live birth. It's oviviparous, actually. Basically, it you know the eggs hatch within its body, and then the uh, it gives birth to live young ones. And the small baby wise things are so cute. Actually, you should really uh, look out, especially during the first rains. You will see them. Uh, you will be lucky if you see them in the wild. So wine snake, you can see them different. And when is wine snake is uh, uh, when cornered or alarmed, it will sort of you know expand its skin, and you can see the intrascalar color, actually. You can see this in the middle where it has opened his mouth. It's basically a threat posture, an alarm posture, where you corner it and try to catch it so it possibly gives a warning and tries to look dangerous. So it is not dangerous and it is hard, totally harmless. And the pointed head actually is very soft. It is not uh, not a hard enough to to pierce or knock your head. <laughs> That's another belief. Uh, local uh, call, call that you know Haranto is dangerous. It attacks your head. That's a myth. Now we come to the lizards. Of course, this is the lizard. Uh, some uh, different, you know, you get uh, uh, about three different varieties of house lizard in the in the in the house. You know, pal, pal, palli, halli. There are so many names, different. Or uh, a dead giroli in um, in Gujarati. So basically, these are in my house. Or the, uh, these lizards are there. I don't kill them. Why? Because they keep my cockroaches out. There are no cockroaches in my house because there are lizards in my house, and I don't mind. And you'll be surprised. There is a belief that you know this lizard falls in the food, or uh, you know it is it turns poisonous. No, actually, even lizards get spoils uh, falls in your food and it gets boiled. Nothing happens. I know an incident when one of the BNH's member had a big khana in her house, and she found that the lizard had fallen in the khana and it got cooked. <laughs> she didn't tell anybody. She quietly removed the lizard and fed the people. Nothing happened, and everybody lived happily ever after. <laughs> so basically, and you know, cats eat these lizards, and even the chicken, the hens eat these lizards. It's totally harmless and non-venomous. Don't to worry. Uh, but they have one uh, special is they can they can walk, they can they can defy gravity. They can defy gravity and walk on the ceilings. How? Because if you examine their actually their uh, see the these pads underneath, they are like the velcro. You have we, we have been using Velcro in our belts and other other places. Now we thought we had we have discovered Velcro. No, this Velcro is was present in the geckos, and they are so fine that they can latch on even to a glass. Even the glass, if you see under microscope, it has got irregularities, and this Velcro can latch on to that microscopic irregularities. So you can imagine that kind of kind of fine uh, hooks it has got on this Velcro, and uh, they lay eggs. You know, and their eggs are hard calcium, not soft like snakes and many times several female geckos will use one side to lay eggs they come together and they lay in one place they find safe and babies keep on hatching from there and yes lizards are best way to keep your insect population in control especially house geckos if you encourage them if you're you're not squeamish about them or you don't don't worry they if they fall in the they don't normally fall in, fall in the food but if even they fall nothing happens if even fall in your body nothing happens uh, i know my uh, uh, my children grew up catching these lizards in the home and they even played with this sometimes. But yes, another thing is that you try to catch this lizard, the tail breaks off. You know, it's like a sir salamat to pagri pachas. You have to you have to say overhead, but let the tail go. It's it's a something a, a bargain. And that's basically in the you know, these lizards are eaten by frog uh, by birds and snakes. So whenever uh, this snake or lizard tries to uh, snake or bird tries to catch this lizard, that there is a special mechanism that actually tail actually breaks on his own and it starts wriggling very vigorously and it diverts the predator's attention towards the wriggling tail and the, the gecko escapes and this way the lizard's tail will grow within a month or two so it gets a new tail and this tail is actually a very life-saving device it especially a mechanism to cut off the muscles and even the blood supply is cut off so there's no bleeding there so that's it. Uh, so you must have seen personally when trying to kill a uh, gecko in the house or catch a gecko, the tail comes in hand or it, it, it just starts wiggling. So wiggling. Basically, it is trying to divert the predator's attention towards the tail. So it, the main gecko can escape. 
So that's the specialty of this wonderful lizard. I really admire geckos. <laughs> and another thing I didn't tell you that it is nocturnal. Nocturnal means you can look at the eyes. The eyes are like cat. The pupil is vertical. Pupil is vertical means they can see in darkness like cats. They are not round. The pupil is not round like we have. So they are nocturnal. So that's another specialty. And they can call. You must have heard the call of the gecko chuk, 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 in the evenings. This is communicating. So you can see this development of voice here. And the frogs have developed their voice to communicate with each other. Just like geckos also communicate. Actually, the males and females, when they're in the breeding time, they keep on calling in the evening to communicate. And they can hear each other and they can see each other in darkness also. And now another uh, dramatic lizard is the fan throated lizard. It's called the Pondicherry fan throated lizard, which is found in Maharashtra also and other places in India also. And there are several species of this. And one of them is very colorful, like this one. The male, especially, is and it stands on two legs. It's very tiny, it's almost uh, less than six inches, actually. And it is a tiny lizard. And the male, actually, in the breeding time, each male will take one uh, rock or one wooden uh, block. And it will not allow any other male to come near, and it will start displaying its its dual this dual law. And this it's uh, the 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 skin under its under its jaw it it expands and it's very colorful to attract the female. And there are fights between males. You know, two males are trying to at, uh, attract one female or trying to uh, try to use the same land. So they, the other male will try to uh, show you know to fight away. And show away the male. So there, there are fights also. And a lot of photographers go to Satara, Pune, and other dry. And this place, this lizard actually is found in the drier places and open spaces, not in the forest. So many people, when you go to Ambuli also, you'll find this beautiful lizard. But you have to go in the breeding time. And breeding time is April and May. When it's hard and hot and barren, that's the time this they display. And you have to sit in the sun, in the scorching sun, to photograph this. And some dedicated photographers have managed that. To get this amazing photographs of this uh, uh, Ponticeriana, the Sitana, or the fan throated lizard. You can look at this. There are different uh, species of these uh, lizards, and uh, based on the color of the this uh, uh, fan uh, under his throat, uh, this skin, it has been classified into different species recently. But otherwise, they are all the fan throated lizards, and they, the males have this kind of, females don't have. But males are, and they excellently, you know, the display is amazing. Then we come to snakes. That's a dhaman, dhaman or the rat snake. Look at the eyes. The eyes are round. That means it is not nocturnal. That means it is diurnal. It comes out in the daytime only. Russell Swiper has got a cat like uh, eyes, and even uh, this uh, gecko has got cat like eyes. That means the pupil is vertical. It becomes round in the night, but daytime it becomes vertical, almost like a slit. But Dhaman's pupil don't contract like the cat snake uh, or the cat snake or the Russell Swiper or like geckos. And this is a long snake. It grows almost six to seven feet, sometimes eight feet. And it's an expert climber. It can swim also. And it, it eats rats, frogs, birds, whatever it can overcome. And it's the best farmers, uh, best uh, snake to have it in the farms. It can keep the control of the rat population because it can. Uh, chase the rats, go into the inside hole uh, and catch the rats also. So that's very interesting. People often mistake it for a cobra. But remember, a cobra doesn't, a cobra has got a slightly thickish head and it has got the, the, uh, the, the, it spreads the hood. The rat snake doesn't have the hood. And many times, daytime, you have seen the males fighting together. You see the male dance of the combat dance. It's not a combat, a male, it's, it's not a mating, but combat dance, sometimes two males. When they fight this, they actually stand on their tails, not on the tails, but on the mid body, and they uh, try to push each other. That's a combat dance, actually, a combat between two males. And the one who falls and keeps on falling will actually leave that area, and the male who survives has the area. So that's a territorial display of the uh, male combat uh, of the rat snakes. And many times people have photographed that, and in Facebook also, people have uploaded these pictures of two snakes, you know, and Entwined to it's not mating, but it is actually a combat dance. Mating is it happens somewhere a very secure place, you don't see them, and they do it lying down only. But this when they're fighting, they stand together neck to neck. That's males, and that's a rat snake. See, you can see the male combat dance here on the right, 
two males are entangled uh, ent entwined uh, around the neck region that's the males actually are trying to uh, display the territorial behavior and look at the face face also is very different from cobra the eyes are very bold and they rat snakes lay eggs and here is how you can compare cobra on the left side and rat snake on the right side so you can see the difference between cobra and rat snakes but yes you can make a mistake and that's the reason you have to see properly and uh, best thing is to just watch and let them go never try to catch it and now comes the russell swiper this is one of the uh, quite um, uh, aggressive snake and when cornered it, it hisses like a pressure cooker it gives you enough warning and then only when you are very near it can bite and it has got long fangs which they actually remains folded in the mouth and when it's about to bite it they open up and they bite and this venom affects the blood circulation system of the human beings so usually when a russell swiper bite the our swastika wiper bite the symptoms are swelling of the wound discoloration of the wound and then you start the blood clotting and there is even the internal bleeding also but then this this venom is not as strong as the uh, as crate venom or the cobra venom. The cobra and crate venom is very, very uh, potent and that can kill a person within four to six hours. So you will have less, very less time. Whereas Russell Swiper can actually give you enough time for treatment, even sometimes days for treatment. And sometimes, you know, villages people, instead of going to doctor, they go to some mantric or some witch doctor and try to do some jadutona. But remember, there is nothing, no connection between jadutona or snakes. So people have lost their lives also. But yes, if the treatment is not properly done of the Russell's wiper or Sauskar wiper bite, it can cause gangrene. Gangrene, it can cause gangrene and maybe your leg or, uh, uh, you know, if somebody is bitten by the snake and the treatment is not proper, if the gangrene sets it, there is an amputation on the limb. That can happen. Yes. So that's a Russell's wiper. And Russell's wiper actually has got a special organ here near the nose and that's a heat sensing organ so it can actually sense the body heat of the prey like the rat or even human being is coming they can sense it so it can remember okay, it's a large prey it's not a small prey or large prey, according to the react and that's a heat sensing organ uh, near its nose and that's a tongue you can see the tongue the folk tongue and the pattern see many people say Are, ajgar ka bachcha hai. you know there's nothing wrong it's no no it's not ajgar ka bachcha. see the pattern is very very uh, very prominent and very regular. Ajgar looks like this, but the python has got irregular patterns, not like this. As I showed you Ajgar in the beginning, the, pat the pattern is very irregular and never like a chain-like pattern like this or in the regular circles. They are very regular and this snake hisses like a pressure cooker when cornered. So remember, if you encounter snakes, just let it go. It is. It can be very dangerous. It's very though it looks very sluggish and uh, slow, but no, it can be very fast and it can strike at almost 180 angles degree also. And the cobra, of course, cobra. We have been seeing it uh, earlier. Uh, you know, we had madaris coming on the roadside. Now they are stopped. But yes, you can see them. And cobra is another snake that will actually, you know, it will not run away, but sometimes it will, it will spread its hood and start to scare you away. It you know, by bluffing by looking bigger and hissing making sounds to scare away and only when somebody comes very close it will bite and yes the cobra uh, venom is very potent and it's a neurotoxin the cobra and it affects the blood's uh, nervous system usually the the symptoms are actually swelling of the wound then you know difficulty in breathing even frothing from the mouth and drooping of the eyelids and that is what it affects the nervous system and the person has to be taken as soon as possible to the hospital because this the venom of cobra and crate is more potent than Russell's wiper and Sauskred wiper. And they lay eggs like uh, rat snakes. And they are excellent in catching rats. But yes, they are venomous. And you should keep safe distance from this kind of uh, reptiles you see them. Usually they also keep, they also are scared of human beings. More than we scared of snakes, they are more scared of snakes. And they usually keep a safe distance from us. They know that man is the most dangerous animal. <laughs> That's uh, the common cobra and they in marathi or in certain places a lot of people that the dahats akada because the mark of 10 whatever it is but basically it is it is, it is a mark actually to deceive a predator because if the predator of the snake comes from behind and snake cannot see it it looks like the the snake is looking at it it has got a false ass eyes like this the face so the predator or the attacker will come in the front where the snake can see it 
so that's the idea actually to have this mark to deceive the predator if it's coming from because snakes also got predators they have got uh, eagles which attack eagles are there owls are there and there are um, even peacocks attack the snakes and even mongoose is there who attack the snakes so for that this is this is a sort of a decoy that the false eyes behind so the predator will come in the front and these are the cobra eggs here you can see there they are they are soft to touch actually and they remain in in slightly moist environment so they don't get shriveled up and and that's what uh, usually they are laid around when the monsoon is there and the babies from inside will actually cut open they have got a special egg tooth a small pointed even the chicken also have got a small egg tooth in the in the nose like a small uh, pointed uh, scale and with that they, they cut open the leathery skin of the egg and they come out and they have a yolk sac also like the chicken egg also so that also gets slowly absorbed in their body that's the first food of the babies now we come to the indian bullfrog i was talking about the indian bullfrog it is it once upon a time we were exporting it you know and that was very cruel method of catching this frog and cutting it into half not even you know uh, we are killing it otherwise but just live catching it and by cutting it half and taking legs and and the half was thrown off and this half half sir the living half used to take almost a day or two to die so that on that basis also cruelty we we had you know bnh had made lot of uh, propaganda regarding this cruelty of the modern trade and finally with the international uh, support and all that this trade was finally banned otherwise india was exporting tons of these frog legs in different parts of india of world like uh, america and japan other places fortunately it has been banned and now the frog is back in the field and and it's amazing when it is breeding is beautiful you know when males especially if the first race you should know when they if you are staying somewhere in the out, uh, you should go to the outskirts of mumbai or some city and then you can hear them calling bra 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 that's how the males and males when they are in the breeding color they are yellow female is drab green but the males are yellow and they have this blue vocal sacs you know and with that they do that it's amazing and i just enjoy you know watching them i have been photographing them when i was uh, earlier in i used to stay in devnar i used to go out photographing with my son and we used to take umbrellas and sit and watch them and photograph them and that's an amazing uh, way to the, keep on and that's and you can approach them also because they are so uh, engrossed in mating and trying to find a mate so they will allow you to approach also and you can see them at a very close range and they keep on uh, sometimes people get uh, uh, annoyed because they keep on calling throughout the night <laughs> can drive you crazy with their sound sometimes but these frogs are very important because they actually can eat insects four times their body weight that's why they are important and now another beautiful frog is their fungoid frog or uh, it's another uh, frog also now uh, the name has changed slightly but uh, this malbar frog is found in the hills where now also in kajrat where i stay sometimes it's come in the house i was i was so presently surprised uh, and uh, this is very beautiful and it has got the bright color actually warns off because it has got the parotid gland on the side so usually animals having bright colors that means they are they are warning the predator to keep off boss i am i am i am distasteful so this parotid gland on the on the back actually has got a certain toxin called parato paratoxin which you the toads have and some frogs like this frog has and that can cause dogs and cats to suffocate they will not die but they will suffer extreme their froth from the mouth they'll cough and they will never again touch this frog and they, this frog is otherwise not very fast moving but yes uh, it is uh, seen in the in the monsoon in the hills especially if you try if you are traveling to mathiran and mahabaleshwar or even national park boril national park you see them in in, in ambil you can see them and taloja you can see them yes look at this frog you know it's another beautiful frog it is and it looks Uh, and it the color actually the or the back matches with the red soil of the laterite red laterite soil but otherwise this pattern actually is a warning color to the predators to keep off and not to be eaten or not to be molested and they will assemble uh, when the rain if too much rain they'll assemble along the pond and they'll breed in the pond and then we have the tree frog actually uh, just last week this tree frog i found him in my bathroom because now it's all dry drying it uh, dry it drying off from outside so tree frogs actually uh, start finding moist places and that's why they end up in bathrooms and toilets uh, in the and they come and sleep them in the in the daytime and the, in the night time they again go out uh, looking for insects and they'll come back to the same place and sleep and this frog is basically you know normally frogs breed in water in the ponds but this frog has evolved to breed away from water 
what they do is the male and female actually the the female and the male they, they sort of they generate sort of a fluid which they with they with they move their legs and they make a foam nest it's a sticky foam nest and this foam nest actually in that the eggs are laid the female lays and the fem the male also uh, fertilizes the eggs in that foam nest and this foam nest is actually very sticky and uh, uh, it it hardens slightly so the inside remains moist of the eggs and this uh, uh, usually are laid on the trees and when the rains come this foam nest actually flows with the water and lands up in some pond or some uh, small stream and then the babies hatch in that that's the idea so they don't lay eggs in the water but they lay eggs away from water and only when the babies are born they fall into the water and they start moving so that's another adaptation which is to protect their eggs because eggs just staying there for a long time in water can be eaten by fishes and other predators so this is an adaptation that's a uh, the, the common tree frog it is very common in the suburbs and comes in a bathroom sometimes in a sea in the garden also and daytime it will be sleeping on a, on a leaf and it's totally you can't see it also when it's totally green like a leaf only and can change colors of course uh, that's a, a small turtle i was uh, just in the we i didn't include but this is the soft shell turtle the narrow head the little punk tata and the soft shell turtles are also common in the areas of ambivili uh in the, there's a small uh, stream there and there these turtles are found there and especially monsoon you can see them because they come out the babies hatch it. they come out and the small turtles you can see around the road sometimes so basically the you know uh what you know these uh, group of animals have actually been subject to a lot of harassment and we are misunderstanding about them and we have also keeping you know away from them and often killing them or you know just trying to destroy them but they are very important to the ecology they are part of the of the of the of the uh, natural ecosystem so basically to protect natural habitat is very important there are of course there are wildlife man laws now the protecting this turtles thought thought as snakes like the python is now protected under uh, wildlife protection act as much as the tiger even the monitor lizard the ghorpad is protected under the wildlife protection act just like tiger and lion so there is a lot of uh, awareness now there and uh, of course once upon a time india was exporting uh, snake skins and lizard skins but that also has been banned there are illegal uh, uh, industries existing in dharavi and in south india also but now that has been banned also people have been arrested for that and of course you know basically the too much of pesticides too much of pollution also has has destroyed the ponds and the breeding habitats of the frogs and turtles and um, there are uh, issues of basically especially uh, many times roads road kills you know snakes often get on the road and roads so that's why now the whenever the highways are built they try to build a underpass so these animals like even deers and other animals can pass through the uh, under under the road and they don't cross the road and get uh, hit by the it's, the same thing happens for the reptiles and amphibians also they get uh, crushed on the road so that's a major issue world over and they are aware about that so basically uh, uh, we will be having a tour to this place it's a lovely place and i invite you to visit this place and at ambilil uh, biodiversity park you can uh, check our website and we are on the facebook also and uh, we will be inviting you to join us and i'll be there to take you there so and we have a naturalist program coming up in december where you can actually learn about nature how to identify things how to uh, decipher uh, the telltale signs in nature how to read this signs in nature you know how to identify the uh, the nest of the birds and the uh, nesting holes of the insects and the snakes other other interesting things and read and know about trees and the barks how to identify trees so this kind of training we are going to hold, we hold between 1st and 24th december and do sign up and you are most welcome to sign up and any questions any you can ask after this uh, show thank you so much now you can ask me um, questions uh, yeah hello sir this is amit i teach in mulan college of commerce i teach the subject of environmental studies for a brief while i was working with okay. uh, dr kv gurraja in the year 2009 and then i switched to teaching uh okay so uh, uh, regarding these pet animals uh, and uh, even other exotic oh. animals 
when we go to preferred market we find them in plenty lot of animals whose trading is illegal we find them in yes. plenty and very open i mean everybody knows that you go there and yeah but now you see animals. yeah but you know now now they have become very strict and once upon a time they were selling start artizes and other things but now they have become very very uh, strict so you will not find you will find animals and birds been sold but they will they know indian animals these are really exotics and what these people okay. do is they get a certificate uh, it may be a false certificate also that these are captive bred animals so they are not wild caught animals so on that basis they are able to sell these animals some of the animals they get certificate so even if, that's even a actually loophole and but once upon a time you know i have been i have, you know earlier this was sell this uh, start out as is um, on in crafter market and i have been there as a bogus customer you know because the wildlife department uh, i knew the director there once once said isaac come and you become a bogus customer try to buy it and once you buy we will come and catch these people so i went there once <laughs> and we caught those fellows but those guys are very dangerous guys so i said i can't come there every time i can go only <laughs> once so i did go there as a bogus customer once and once even we raided one place um, in uh, in fort area where we came to know that the leopard skin was uh, there and i i became a fire, fire brigade officer uh and trying to say that we have to change some some there is some uh, issue we found a building and fire we are we just checking so as a fire brigade officer i went and tried we didn't find the leopard skin in that building but then we had a member who looked who was a, a european member she was, she's from england so we sent her and the leopard skin came out and we caught those guys so yes these pe uh, people have been raided in the past also like crafter market and they have been uh, under under this uh, scanner but yes there have been corrupt corrupt officers sometimes the officers are not good enough sometimes we have been good officers who have been very strict so that had been working but yes now what is the loophole is that they try to produce a certificate showing that these animals are not wild caught and they are they are hybrids and they are uh, basically captive bred on that basis they can they can sell yes okay so these days even if we make a birth or death certificate of a human being Mm. our uh, registration at the census of india thing platform uh, mm. we get a qr code on the birth certificate and death certificate anybody right, right. who scans it is directed to the website of the uh, government of india and you can check the you can verify the authenticity of the certificate okay okay okay, okay. maybe if if let us say a body is issuing such kind of a certificate uh for example the yeah. under states regulation maybe if you are producing a certificate of yeah, trade yeah. then i think we need to upgrade there yeah yeah i think they they are uh, see they they what they do many of them are are imported from thailand and uh, indonesia and malaysia actually where there are big farms actually of these exotic mm -hmm. birds and animals they are breeding there and mm -hmm. they are coming there via nep via tamil nadu and other places and there's a big trade going on but um, and they are they are basically issuing certificates unfortunately and these certificates are recognized by the wildlife department so okay. maybe as you said that if their qr code must be there or uh, has to be there maybe we can recommend that that, that there, has, there has to be qr code like what you suggested can mm. be actually very good actually and so that can be uh, full proof yeah yes, yes. good, good uh, session yeah. yeah sir we would like to come to the foundations uh, ambivali park yeah 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 actually we are going to uh, you contact our uh, website uh, people are there like roshni is there and okay. uh, you can contact her and you can fix up a outing also and we can possibly arrange a tour for your college students also yes okay okay yes, and yes. sir you also have a pro program project going on in mulund park yeah mulund vgnp yeah. the the rear side of the sanjay gandhi national park we are having a program there also so there also you can uh, bring people yeah so no since, problem since most of our students are from mulund maybe we can come there okay. as well yeah 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 we can arrange yeah. that so do uh, uh, contact uh, roshni uh, from our team and uh, on the website or in the web, facebook and i think she is there here nature watch who is there samrita you are alone samrita yes sir acha roshni is not there na today no acha yeah samrita is also there of course you can contact samrita also and she will pass on the message to roshni yes yes so yeah, we are all sir. part of the team yeah thank you thank you amitya thank thank you thank you sir Yes. So, any uh, other questions you want to ask about snakes and other reptiles? Snakes has been fascinating, and the best time to is a monsoon actually to see the snakes and chase them. So, thank you, friends. In spite of the Australian uh, and India finals match going on, uh, you have come and attended uh, my talk. Thank you so much, and hope to see you someday in uh, um, uh, Ambivali. 
we'll start uh, go they will go there and start uh, try to see some snakes or reptiles there wonderful so thank you so much and have a nice uh, week week ahead thank you so much thank you yeah thank you sir bye bye take care